In this video, I'm going to show you how to thicken a hollow mesh so that you can 3D print it. Mesh Mixer doesn't have an explicit wall thickness tool, but you can approximate that operation using the Extrude tool. First, expand an initial selection to the entire mesh using the E hotkey. Then start the Extrude and set the nor direction to normal. Now when you drag the offset slider, you'll see that the extrusion is creating a shell inside or outside the original surface. When the shell is inside, it can be hard to see what is going on, so drop the X-ray shader to see the internal surface. The offset slider is pretty small, so you won't have a lot of precision when you drag it. But one thing about the sliders in Mesh Mixer that you might not be aware of is that the further your mouse gets from the slider, the slower the rate of change relative to your mouse movements. So if I drag down while still holding down the left mouse button, and then drag left and right, I can make much finer adjustments. Okay, so I'm going to set the thickness to 1mm here and accept the result. Then I drop back in the default shader and you can see the problem. Because this is actually just an extrusion operation, the inner ear surface is poking through the outer ear surface. So now I'll show you how to quickly clean this up. The first thing to do is to select the interior surface. Since it's a face group, you can just double click it and run the separate command. This turns the selection into a new object and so brush operations will only affect the inner surface. Now you can switch to the smooth brush and scrub over those bits that are poking out. The smooth brush basically shrinks things so they'll disappear as they move under the outer surface. If you switch to the x-ray shader, you can see how things are looking. You can work with the shader active, although some of the highlight renderings won't look right. The smooth brush can only go so far, so now I'll switch to the volume brush, which also does smoothing, but it's smoothing remeshes so it can erode away more of these ear bits. Switch the secondary brush to mode S2 and hold down shift to use it. Dial down the strength so that you have a bit more control. To get a better look at what you're doing, you can select the outer shell object and hide it using Ctrl or Command V, then switch back to the default shader. You can use any modeling tools you want here. I'm just going to select and erase this ear so that the model is solid inside the ear. One tricky bit is that the inner shell is inside out, and by default you can't brush, sele brush select from the back side of faces. You can toggle this on using the Allow Back Faces checkbox, although you still won't see a highlight. On the other side, the mesh has collapsed from the smoothing, and the brush select won't work very well. So just use a lasso select and then do the Erase Fill. The hotkey for Erase Fill is F. There's still a few glitchy areas where this surface is self-intersecting. Just scrub over those with smoothing mode S2 of the volume brush to clean them up. Now we have a pretty nice hollowing, but I'm going to go back and smooth some more anyway. I need to be careful though to stay away from the boundary, because otherwise it won't zipper back together with the outer shell. You can also use the hold boundary option for this with refinement disabled. Now we bring the outer shell back in, select both the inner and outer shells by holding shift and clicking on them, and run the combine command to merge them into a single object. The shells are still disconnected after the combine, so run the close cracks command to join them back up. If you did things right, there should be no blue edges left, and if you run the inspector the mesh should be solid with no defects detected. One last thing you might want to do is give the object a flat base. Double click to select the face group ring at the base of the mesh. Then run the extrude tool, set the direction to the Y axis, and the end type to flat. This will give you a flat ring at the bottom of your mesh. If you don't want the extra ring height, you can do a plane cut to get a flat bottom at different heights. And you're done, a thickened surface ready for printing.